Welcome back, everybody, to another recap, Easter eggs, references, all those kinds of things that you could possibly put in the in the keywords for a particular YouTube search for a video on the TV show What If, Marvel's What If. It's big time spoiler time. Hashtag emotional. That's, that's right. Uh, now, these are a little bit different uh, in terms of the editing than the previous ones we've done on WandaVision and Loki and Falcon and the Winter Soldier because to get these out as quickly as possible, it's going to be a very basic edit. Just some scrolling images. It's more of an audio experience. You know what I mean? Do you know what I mean, Mason? Yeah, I know what you mean. But that doesn't mean that you shouldn't leave a like, you know? That's right. That doesn't mean you shouldn't suggest, like, fun animations to be put in the next one or, you yep. know... Perhaps, I don't know, if, if the person editing these can, like, do a hand-drawn replica of any of the characters in the, <laughs> in the show. Colleagues would definitely be up for it. Yeah, 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 for sure. Uh, but if you do want to see these early, you can actually head over to BigSandwich.co because the audio version goes up there pretty much straight away after we record. And normally we would do this pretty much after the show. There was a bit of a delay because of a work commitment that Mason had. I was ready and wanted <laughs> to do it, but he said, no, I must work a real job and then record this thing that we do as a joke. I said it with such glee as well. I love, I'm like, James, yes, 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 yes. Oh. Anyway, let's, get, let's get into it. Uh, yeah, so what did you think of episode one? Yep. Something, something, what if Peggy Carter were Captain Carter or whatever it's called? Weird title. <laughs> like, yeah. do you know what I mean? What if Peggy Carter changed her first name to Captain and that is the <laughs> end of the episode? <laughs> That's it. She gets a lot of weird looks at the bank is basically the answer <laughs> there. And the DMV. Uh, but no, this 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 episode is interesting. I mean, it's it's certainly brisk. And yeah. I would say it's probably, it's quite, it feels quite light on the details because obviously what it is essentially is Captain America, the first Avengers being retold in its entirety, except like they've changed the protagonist from, the main protagonist from Steve Rogers to Peggy Carter. Exactly. So... Yeah. It's sort of it's sort of reliant on us to and on obviously if you're watching What If you would have seen uh, Captain America the First Avenger and you would you can obviously fill in the blanks yeah. and go oh of course we don't need every establishing shot of grimy New York City before we go into the you know into the into the secret lab uh, where the where the uh, Vita rays are being projected and etc. We don't need the lead up where the Red Skull goes into the the tiny, you know, European town where the Tesseract is being hidden, et cetera. We can we can skip mm. most of that. But by that very nature, it's kind of like we're we're really we're really whipping through this, you know? And it's kind of Yeah. I, I know what you mean, because I'm kind of in two minds about it because it did feel like kind of like the montage from that movie. Do you know what I mean? Just kind of mm. whipping through yep. all the, you know, all, all the all the key points and like, you know, where he, you know, he'll Captain America and his team were like Storm or whatever. You know, there's that five minute sequence of that. Uh -huh. But at the same time, I don't want a two hour recap of that movie where two of the characters had like switched positions. You know what I mean? Yes. <laughs> so it's yeah. kind of like, I, I see why they did it. And also often with what if stories, they don't go into huge detail about the previous story anyway. They assume that you know what it is, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm, if you like are, if up. you are reading or, yeah, if you are reading or watching a kind of, you know, uh, a meta take on the original they're pretty confident you have read the original or you've watched yeah. the original. Like I, I, but I also, I, it wouldn't surprise me if there are people watching this for watching a Marvel thing for the very first time. They're like, Oh, 33 minutes, very easily digestible. I, oh, I don't know. I don't understand <laughs> what is, what is happening here. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Cause I was, yeah, I was a bit mixed on it to be honest. And I think a large part of it comes down to it. It's not that much of a deviation. From the story, like this, mm. the idea of Captain Carter or Captain Britain, you know, whatever you want to call her, that's really interesting to me and something that I'd like to see fleshed out more. But it, this narrative just felt very familiar and kind of mm -hmm. it didn't it didn't really grab me as much as I would have liked it to. Yeah, you're right. It is still the the one you know remaining successful experiment of the Super Soldier program, wearing a red, white, and blue costume with an indestructible vibranium shield. Mm fighting back against Hydra with a with a sidekick or a or a supporting cast member who who is in love with them and then they like oh okay you know we we've we've got something you know romantic but we can't act on it and then life the the war gets in the way and and the mm. sacrifice must be made and then the the main character reemerges in modern day New York like it is, it it really is the same thing, but yeah, with slightly different visuals. But the visuals, 
are amazing, I think. I agree. It looks incredible. It reminds me of the first time I saw cell shaded animation and that's in the game Sly Cooper on the PlayStation 2. I remember <laughs> seeing it in the Target and being like, oh my God, this is the future. I know this has probably been used before, but this is always to me going to be the Sly Cooper animation. <laughs> So, so not even, so not even you. The the revelation was not even you playing the game. It was just seeing the box in a target. Yeah, I think I never seen like an animated three D object with like a black line around it. Essentially, <laughs> you know? wow. But hell yeah. It, but it's obviously been been done like you know, quite a bit before and quite a bit since. But yeah, it's really fluid and it's especially noticeable in the fight sequences. Like the way that she moves with the shield, it's really impressive. Like it's just, it's beautiful mm. to look at, you know what I mean? Yeah, and it and what I enjoyed, uh, one thing that was kind of, you know, new for this is the the idea of Peggy just, just really enjoying mixing it up. Mm. Like clearly enjoying that sort of sense of power and like, I can flip a truck, I'm just going to flip another truck. Just... <laughs> Make sure this isn't a fluke. <laughs> yeah, that's it. It had me thinking, though, like, because she was physically stronger and more trained than Steve Rogers, I wonder whether, at least initially, she was more powerful than he was, like, out of the gate. You know what I mean? Yeah, maybe. it seems like she was doing some things, and it's also probably because you can do these things with animation mm-hmm. that, you know, that he couldn't, at least not straight away. You know what I mean? <laughs> I was going to say, we often have uh, conversations where we say things like, a comic book is like a movie, but it's got an unlimited budget. Or like animations like a movie, but it's got an unlimited budget. And I, I just like to imagine the faces of comic book artists or animators yeah. when they hear that and just be like, oh, no, they, oh, that, 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 that just means more work for me. My time is valuable. <laughs> nah, nah, it's not. You're, we've got an unlimited budget. You're going to draw a million spaceships. Yeah, exactly, yeah. The thing is as well, it's pretty impressive that the the cast that they got back, I think they don't always lend themselves to voice acting, but it is a different skill. But it is nice we get like Hayley Atwell and Dominic Cooper and Sebastian Stan. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it's Steve Rogers, his voice is done by Josh Keaton. Uh, so uh, Chris Evans doesn't return. I think he does a, a really decent job all in all. Yeah. One person that uh, I noticed that they just quickly got rid of, and by got rid of I mean shot, was Tommy Lee Jones's character. They just kind of quickly kill him. And then they're just like, Bradley Whitford, you know, he was in that movie. And I'm like, was he? Yeah. And I had to look it up. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I I, questioned that as well. I'm like, really? Was it? Okay, all right. Yeah. And uh, is uh, is um, Steve Rogers' voice actor known for anything in particular? Is he famous in the voice acting world? Yeah, he's, um, he, one of the things that I saw him in recently, he's Shiro in the new Voltron series. Ah, okay, right. Uh, which is terrific. And he's like, I just looked through his list and I'm like, yeah, great. Like, really good stuff, all in all. Yeah. He must be coming back for other things, right? They wouldn't just put him in this. Yeah, and we got, um, we got obviously, Stanley Tucci got a line or two. It's true, he's got the Midas Tooch. Yeah. <laughs> Thank the you. Midas Touche. <laughs> uh, they brought back uh, the, that guy from The Walking Dead who does the Red Skull's voice. Ross Mar- Marquand, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, of course, they brought in Daryl Hammond. Who's Daryl Hammond? That's that's how they would announce him on SNL. He's one <laughs> of the guys from SNL. Who does he play in? Big time SNL guy. Who, but who does he play in this? He's like the second in command Nazi guy. Oh, really? I didn't realise that. Is he in that movie? Chris Kattan. <laughs> So they announced Chris Kattan on SNL. Is he in the first movie? Uh, I can't remember. <laughs> He's certainly a Nazi, though. Wow. In the show, not in real life. Wow. In real life, probably a nice man. Startling revelation. Yeah. yeah. How did you feel about the character designs? I mean, yeah, good overall. It's pretty accurate, you know. They boil down the essence of it. Yeah, I think I think maybe, though, the particular style of the animation lends itself to more accurate versions of some characters' Like maybe ones that are sort of more caricature-y. Sure, yeah. Like Lil Steve Rogers, I think, is very accurate. Yeah, yeah. Because he's got a certain, he's got the big ears and he's got a certain look about him. <laughs> yeah. But like, they're, they're not quite there with like Sebastian Stan's like rough stubble. Uh, like he's yeah, a very, yeah. it's just, they've sort of just, they've just short, sort of shaded the bottom of his face grey. Do you think maybe he's too generic a man for animation? Too generically handsome, yes, 100%. <laughs> okay. Sure. But they got, you know, they, they got a good-looking Dum Dum Dugan. Yeah, that's are, true, know, yeah. Obviously, because he's, he's a mustache and a, and, a, and a bowler hat, so. You can, you, yeah, yeah. You, can't really, you can't really go wrong with that. He, he's like, that's right. yeah, he's built for this specifically. Uh, mm-hmm. but interesting, though, that you mentioned Bucky because one of the major changes to this is that he wouldn't, off the back of this, become the Winter Soldier. Woo! Thanks. You almost ripped my arm off. And it had me wondering whether they were going to make 
Steve Rogers a version of the Winter Soldier in this, like down the line. Because he's in that train explosion. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, I, and I thought I thought initially that that's where they were going to go. They were going to do. They were just going to sort of swap identities and attributes. Mm. Like when his, you know, when his sort of Iron Man suit crashed into the the, the you know, when the train exploded, I thought he was going to disappear and he they would have turned him up in the uh, in the in the Hydra base being experimented on. But uh, yeah. yeah, I guess not. One one thing that I um that I kind of missed in the flurry of the episode because of how quickly it moved and maybe I just wasn't paying attention. But you know the, the the allies get the the tesseract, mm-hmm. and then at the end, Red Skull's like, "Look what I've got! I've got this!" And I'm like, "Where did he get that?" But it was powering the suit. Is that right? It was powering the it was powering the Iron Man suit. Yeah, the, yeah. The I think start. I missed that. Yeah, uh, suit. Yeah. yeah, I love how Red mm. Skull's plan was just open a portal and just let's just see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably a, I mean, if, um, you know, it's, it's probably tentacle monsters. <laughs> if these weird stone carvings on these on these weird walls has taught me anything. Yeah. How do you feel? So I, I had some I had some questions about The Watcher. Sure, yeah. Uh, how do you feel about Jeffrey Wright's performance as The Watcher? I mean, he's killing it, man. He's, and it's also, yeah. <laughs> you know, we, we, you know, we read a lot of comics and The Watcher has appeared and that's what he does. He turns up at the start and goes, imagine this universe, if you will. There's going to be some weird shit, but don't even worry about it. This isn't the real universe. <laughs> I, and then at the end, he's I, like, yeah. pretty weird, wasn't it? Pretty weird stuff. <laughs> I can't interfere and I won't, but maybe I will sometimes. He definitely will. <laughs> look, if 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 these recaps have taught me anything, it's look and and famously, you know, in in Uatu's first appearance, he did. He was like, "I can never interfere," and then then Galactus showed up on Earth, and he's like, "Well, time to interfere, I guess." Yeah, so, exactly. I think we should do a um. I think we should do a running segment of the show mm-hmm. where we try to guess whether next week is the week he's going to interfere. Do you know what I mean? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Look, I think I my my feeling is, and you know, people have speculated, and some of the trailers have suggested that these won't be unconnected what ifs. Yeah. They will connect somehow. The characters are going to meet. Uh, this might be a a Doctor Strange multiverse of madness kind of situation. Yes. So I, I suspect. Perhaps Uatu will have some influence on putting a team together, maybe to stop some sort of multiversal threat. Mm, absolutely. So maybe that's the deal. And it's also interesting because she ends up in the modern day or 2012, you know mm. what I mean, around the, around the start of the Avengers. Yeah, yeah. And there's Nick Fury and Clint Barton there, and I wonder whether, like, are other people going to pop out in that timeline or is he going to merge different timelines? I just don't think it's going to be different. Like, we've seen all these characters on posters together uh-huh. and that could just be like a promotional thing yes but i just don't think that's the way these things go and people kind of expect everything to tie in you know what i mean everything yeah. has to mean something because if it doesn't people get very pissy about it <laughs> that's true yeah <laughs> yeah and the, and the and you know they can and they've probably taken on the feedback about wandavision or you know falcon and winter soldier or loki and and people and you know have have learned that people do get very upset when the things they predict don't come to pass yeah and maybe they've just taken all the character models and just just given it just smooshed them together in the last <laughs> episode just just pasted them all in the same room it's not just one like gelatinous multiverse marvel monster <laughs> just everybody smooshed i in. mean maybe maybe that's maybe that's what was on the other side of that portal i don't know well speaking of gelatinous like tentacle monsters or whatever that was shu mcgorath right great question james we'll probably be confirmed by the time this goes out but that was my <laughs> thinking anyway was it was it Shuma Gorath, the Sorcerer Supreme of another dimension, who is famously most present in the Marvel vs. Capcom games? That kind of weird <laughs> pink octopus starfish monster man. Yeah. I mean, maybe. He's normally not that big, but I mean, he is magic, so maybe he could become that big. Yeah. Well, the thing is as well... Like, makes you think, doesn't it? It really does make you think, especially because he's the rumoured villain in Multiverse of Madness. Ah. So I thought that was uh, that was really interesting. Actually, um... I wanted to also have this question come up every week, and that is, would you bring over like the main character or any of the characters really into the into the mainline MCU or, or live action? And director Brian Andrews said, while we don't know if this is necessarily going to happen, it would be amazing if they would just do a Captain Carter movie. And there's actually been rumors uh, that she is going to show up and we could get her in the multiverse of madness. Interesting. I yeah. I look. I would. I'm always happy to see Haley Atwell. Sorry, that yep. last bit was speculation on my behalf. But there are rumours that she is going to show up at, at some point. Interesting. Yeah. Uh, look, I'm always happy to see Haley Atwell in a thing. So mm. uh, great. And she she for for a lot of 
these movies, despite being, you know, a key part of Captain America's origin, she's sort of been relegated to, you know, a background role in a lot of this stuff or just appearing for five minutes in a, you know, in a, in a hospital bed or something like that or just appearing in a, in a 1950s flashback or something. Yeah. Oh, and she had, that, she had that TV series for two seasons. I forgot about that briefly. <laughs> but she true. did have, it's on, it's on Disney Plus. You can watch that. But I would like to see, yeah, give her, give her more of an action role. You know, yeah. why not, hey? Yeah, absolutely. I, yeah. I, I completely agree. Um, she actually mentioned this. She spoke to USA Today where she said, the possibility of Peggy getting an opportunity to take the helm in a far more ambitious way does excite me. I would invest fully in a process where the right creative team was put together to pave the way for Peggy to tap into the cultural consciousness of today and become a modern heroine of our times. I wouldn't settle for less than what she and the fans deserve. And look, I think it would be great. You'd have to like bigger up a little bit like She-Hulk. We'll see. Yeah, that, that's the question because obviously how they did Captain America is they got tall actor Chris Evans mm. and they got him to work out a lot and then they got pre-serum Steve Rogers by like shrinking him down briefly or putting his his head on a smaller person's body yeah. but they, they would have to add a foot to to Hayley Atwell's height so I don't know but I mean you know exactly because she's regular sized person just, yeah 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 but uh, you know um, the budget's unlimited though you know what I mean James you just, just use uh, those tricks they did in Lord of the Rings you know what I mean you just stand one closer to the camera it's, I, I don't think it's <laughs> that big a deal because it's not like an insane effect where you need to recreate a person yeah entirely you know what i mean like the hulk you know what i mean yeah she just looks like a person all they'll have to do yeah she's always fighting hydra in like weird like oddly shaped buildings <laughs> you know with, at, at, at very strange angles <laughs> that's exactly it there's a few things i wanted to mention in terms of easter eggs as well um some versions of captain britain wields a sword that's correct right sometimes it's excalibur look, or a different sword is that right or something look if if i may if i may james uh, th- this is for people who who don't know, uh, and, and who people who people will will add comments, Captain Carter is very different from uh, Captain Britain. Yes, uh, Captain Britain is is Brian Braddock. Mm-hmm. Uh, he is he is uh, the the cha- the champion of the British Isles. He's often the uh, the leader of the mutant team Excalibur. Yeah, although he is not a mutant himself, he uh, he gets his superpowers from like a magical. Uh, sort of suit of armor that gives him superpowers. Mm-hmm. He's also not to be confused with uh, Brian Brannock, who is a mutant who has the ability uh, to tell what size your feet are just by looking at you. Wow, James, that is a little that James, that's a little inside joke just for me and fellow fans of the Brannock device, which is that little like metal slider thing at a shoe shop, and you put your foot in. Oh, it. Oh, very good. And it tells you what size your foot is. So that joke's Where just my Braddock be- bros at? Where's my Braddock bros at? <laughs> you know what I think it is? That joke's for you if you listen back to this and you go, great. Like, I think that's only for you. <laughs> yeah, it really is. Yeah. <laughs> this won't survive to the video. But yeah, anyway, uh, 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 yeah, I, it's, from time to time, yeah, like, you know, Britain's champion, always in flux. Yeah. yeah is, but he's more, uh, Captain Britain is more magical. But hey, it's not to say they couldn't introduce magical elements to this character. Yeah, you know? totally. You know, Captain America's picked up Thor's hammer. So Yeah, that's right. I mean, he shouldn't you know. have. That was very presumptuous, but he did do it. Very rude. <laughs> mm. I just want to mention just quickly a few uh, little things of note also. Uh, Bucky says like, oh, you almost ripped my arm off. Because, you know, he got his arm ripped mm. off that time. And H- Howard Stark mentions Hedy Lamar, who's like an actress he was potentially dating. And she actually was a real life person who helped invent like this frequency hopping signal which also is now worked into like Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. Yeah, she was true. an actress in this like wartime like inventor, uh, which is just you know like a nice little nod. You know what I mean? It is. It's true. Yeah. Anyways, um, next week it's actually going to be the well one of the T'Challa episodes because apparently he's going to appear in four Chadwick Boseman, but this is specifically the Star Lord episode. A lot of people uh, have seen the first three in media. We we have not. Um, I didn't send an email quick enough or something. I don't know. As, uh, that being said, I like kind of watching these, you know, week to week as opposed to watching a bunch and then kind of waiting. I would, I would, yeah. In a, in a way, I kind of would like to be surprised every week. Okay, so I should not say what's coming next week. <laughs> no, I mean, it, I mean, it's too late now. Obviously, week <laughs> two's been ruined for me. Thanks for nothing. But I, you know, I think with this kind of with this kind of sort of anthology storytelling. I think it would be interesting just for us as viewers and for everybody to just tune in every week and not know what the what if is going to be. Because if we know it in advance, you know, we we kind of will build those stories in our head. And, you know, like this one, 
it might be a case of, yeah, we sort of, you know, we knew where this was going to go. Yeah. So, you know. Yeah, no, I don't disagree with that. But it, I mean, I'm, I'm saying, yeah, I'm saying imagine tuning in every week and you're like, what's, 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 what's you know. What's, what's this? What's if, you say to yourself. Yes, what's if? Yeah. What's this? <laughs> all in all, look, I, I, I didn't this? love it. <laughs> <laughs> Look, yeah, all okay. in all, I didn't, all right. I didn't love it. Like, I, I mean, I wasn't bored. One element that I really liked of it was them working together as a team, like Captain Carter and Hydra Stomper. I think yeah. they're more, those two together are more of an effective team than Peggy and Steve were in the first movie. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. they, they, they kind of, they did a lot more damage in a shorter amount of time. Yeah. It seemed. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, I, I am though looking forward to kind of what the wrinkle is going to be every week. I just hope we get stuff that's, like a bigger deviation than what we've seen already, yeah. mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. But that's what if. Yeah, I look, I enjoyed it a lot. I think I'm probably going to rewatch it, uh, you know, in fairly short order just to rewatch those action sequences because I think they were very, like you said, they're very fluid, they're very, they're very exciting, and it's just amazing what you can do on zero budget. You know that's what I mean? That's true. It's so true. <laughs> you know what I mean? I just yeah. want to quickly mention as well, sometimes people are like, yeah, but you didn't say you you didn't you weren't you didn't speak like super glowing of it, so you you hated it. You just didn't want to say it. No, sometimes I just think things are all right. You know what I mean? Wow, <laughs> that's just that's just how it is. Do you know what I mean? Well, then get off the internet, <laughs> idiots. I should get off the internet because, like, it's, as you as you know well, everything on the internet is either the best thing ever or the worst thing ever. So very true. Pick very, one. Very true. Yeah. Uh, anyways, yeah. I just want to quickly mention as well, we have a service called BigSandwich.co. We've got a bunch of stuff up there. It's like our own personal Patreon, but not shady. It's real <laughs> and it doesn't steal your money. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, so we do movie commentaries. We do bonus podcasts. Uh, we actually recently did a Zack Snyder's Justice League uh, commentary for the first half. And this coming Sunday, there's going to be an episode on. We're going to look at a particular and very odd what if comic. <laughs> from oh yeah yeah it's uh from uh, yeah. days long ago yeah speaking of meta speaking of meta and we weren't speaking about it but but speaking of massively self indulgent <laughs> uh it's 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 a it's gonna be a real treat i'm excited to talk about it <laughs> yeah absolutely uh, and also our podcast the weekly planet where we talk movies and comics and tv shows that goes up there a day early on sunday but normally it goes out on monday if you are keen let's get out of here mason yeah Let's do it. Thank you to Collings for the edit. Thanks, Collings. And we'll see you guys next time on a different uh, but equally entertaining thing, whether that be good or bad. See you in another universe. Ooh, I won't interfere. I'm going to have to interfere. But I'm not, stepping in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But and also, to be clear, not a different universe, the same the same YouTube channel. Don't go looking in a different universe because nah. you won't find us and we won't get the view. So. No, and you'll get attacked by a squid probably or something. Yeah, yeah, you got to watch out for squids in that in that multiverse. <laughs> All right, thanks, everyone. Uh, grab that show, you guys. We'll see you next week. Goodbye. Goodbye.